Hey guys, welcome to the channel, and again talking about these tools so as we better prepare. Now, I've been recommending uh, shotguns as a potential option for people in different parts of the world actually, given that they tend to be a lot more likely to be available given the different local laws. Uh, around the world, it's generally the case that shotguns are a lot more likely to be available for the for the common civilian population, let's put it that way. Or at the very least, it tends to have less restrictions. Now, of course, this would be a little bit of an exception, given that it's a rather short semi-automatic, and it depends on where you are, but usually you see some kind of restriction in terms of the barrel length, right? I like this little thing, but I understand that's the case. Now, wherever you may be, as I've said, even if you are in UK, you can buy something like this with a longer barrel. Actually, I bought this shotgun because of classes that I took on practical shooting, uh, a shotgun class, practical shooting uh, shotgun class that I took in UK. I was loaned a uh, Hudson and I liked it so much that while, by, while later I saw the option of getting one of these for myself. I paid for this thing 300 bucks, brand new inside the box from the, from the gun store brand new 300 bucks yeah that is affordable magazines nothing the magazine is there this is my mag it's five bucks in amazon 20 bucks in amazon so for less than four and yes a little bit of paint of my own for less than 400 dollars you have a very decent little machine that does its thing quite nicely that's a semi-automatic 12 gauge and yeah it's no joke at close distance it's gonna do um, quite a bit of of, of deterring. Um, the cheap uh, uh, red dot still works. I, I forget it on every once in a while. It's still working. It's actually quite efficient with it. It's no aim point, but my aim point is like six hundred dollars. That thing is twenty. So you know, make your decision there. Now I was at the range the other day, and for the first time in a very very long time, I had one of these fail. Not that thing, that thing ran just fine, this is what failed. So I had like a very strong uh, impact of the, of the firing pin and it just didn't go off, it just didn't fire. I was like, okay, that's interesting. Now, a couple things here to keep in mind, a couple lessons learned. First of all, buy quality ammunition. I won't even mention the manufacturer of this ammo because it, it could be a one-off. It could be one in a thousand. It could be one in ten thousand. It's not fair to shit all over. And yes, even if it, you're just mentioning it, it's going to be having a negative impact. And I don't want to do that. I simply will say that no, it's not some fancy ass ammo. It's not Winchester or Remington. It's just the cheapest ammo I could get because I'm just burning ammo. I'm not worrying about that sort of thing. When I'm worrying about that sort of thing, this is what I have. This is Winchester. This is Buckshot. This is what you should have as well. Buy quality ammunition from a well-known, reputable manufacturer. Don't buy the, the cheap ammo that you use for just burning powder in the range or for, you know, for any other thing that's not as critical. That would be lesson number one. Always buy very high quality ammunition for this specific purpose. When you're training, that's okay. Use this stuff. In fact, in training, it's even better because if you have like a malfunction, you can actually practice the point number two what I, that I want to make, which is train. Know what the hell you're doing. Have you taken classes? Have you not? Okay, maybe you should invest. In fact, I will also recommend not only a channel, which has a ton of information, you have the subscribe button over there somewhere, hit the subscribe, the, 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 the button so as to follow the channel, get the notifications, and get my books, Surviving the Economic Collapse and Street Survival Skills, which will specifically have chapters dedicated on using these tools in the way you're taught in proper classes. None of these things is a secret of mine. These are all things you're taught in proper classes on how to use these tools correctly. No, you just don't learn these things by watching a couple YouTube videos. No, you need proper instruction. If you cannot get a qualified instructor, uh, from, a, from a good, reputable instructor or school, then really this is going to be a great way to at least get those fundamentals in order. And you can dry fire practice, you can train some of these things yourself, and it's going to be a lot better. One of the things you need to train when you have a tool like this is, well, 
failure to feed or failure to eject drills. It's going to depend specifically on the, on the tool that you're using and the kind of, of failure that you're dealing with. But here, for something like what happened, it is super simple. I mean, in a pump action shotgun, it's just pumping it. Now, this is really not all that different. It's actually not all that, uh, it's pretty much as fast, which is just working that bolt with a big handle that you have here on the side. You just pull it back and you just eject the shell that did not fire. And that's it. It really should not take more than a second. If you know what you're doing, if you trained these things, it's going to be less than a second that you go, pop, 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 oh, pop, and you work it and that's it. That's it. No more than that, right? Now, I also have to say this, that if you are in the shooting range, well, these are the kind of things that you practice, but technically speaking, if this does not fire when you pull the trigger, you, you shouldn't really work that thing in under a second, even if you're capable of doing that, because the standard procedure is keeping the gun pointed in a safe direction for at least a couple more seconds. Two, five seconds more, keeping the gun, why? Because there's always a very small but possible, uh, there, there's always the, the existing possibility that if, he, if the firing pin did hit as it should, there's a small possibility that it's a delayed fire, that the, the primer did ignite in some fashion and just one or two seconds later, actually, boom, it actually goes. It is very rare, it is super rare, but technically speaking, that's what you should be doing just in case that happens. You don't wanna be working that, that action right in the middle of this going off. It, it shouldn't be the, it's, yeah, but it's just not good. You don't want that happening. So keep it pointing in a safe direction, and once you're done, work it yourself as fast as you can, as effectively as possible, but as fast as you can, so as to practice that muscle memory of clearing that malfunction or that interruption, not caused by the weapon, not caused by you, but caused by this, which is always a possibility. Guys, that's gonna be all for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have an awesome day. Take care, see you on the next one.